sit back, out, hold your ball, out, heel, hold your knee stretch. Sit back, out, hold your ball, heel, open the knee, stretch. So the reason, again, for opening the knee, which is a curse, when you put your heel out, you open the knee, it's called boring. When you hold both knees, square out to allow your rotation of your hips to take a fuller, um, full scope before you align here. So going back to how to hold, you have to make sure that when you come out, your hips have to be aligned straight there. When you come out with your heel, you know that you can't come in the same line. You have to come out for the span because you want that flow and that that uh, scope of, of, of uh, rotation. So right when you put your heel there, this is that the one right here, it lends itself to your movement, making sure you step, uh, stretch out that back. So we're looking at rotation of, first the groin, opening of the knees, and then the rotation of the hips. Okay? So consciously make, the only way it can be embedded and natural for you is to consciously do it, especially in a Tai Chi walk. <coughs> then you, when you put your leg out, it's not like you're just putting it in front, you're putting your leg out sideways. But you see, this leg is already bowed. You put it this way, you just have to, to make it bow this side. You just have to come down. You, you just have to come down just like that. And then you're this. So the bowing is not as hard as you think. It's just you got to get but you need to orient yourself here. Otherwise, what happens is I see people do this, and then they step forward, and then they start to, 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 to bow. Sort of too late. you got to do this way. Oh, I'm sorry. Step this way, orient yourself. And you're not stepping straight in front of you. If you did, you would be stepping this direction. You're stepping sideways because you want to go in that direction. But this leg is already bowed, you see this? And as I come down, I bow this leg. Yeah? And I also rotate at the same time. When we do part of the course's knee, I find the best way to show you. We're on a T step. And you know that the ball is one or two inches below your navel, and the top hand is at your um, chest level. When you part the horse's knee, you remember that you have to come out, away from that back foot. But you also have to remember it's going to be a bowing. So there we are, and it's taking care of two things right now. When we shift our hands before we actually part the horse's knee, or at the beginning, when we come out, our hands shift. Maybe I should turn this So I'm at a T-step. I come out, and two things happen heel and I shift my hands. Okay, so this part sets me up for my boy to come up. Do you see that? It makes better sense. So to do it just this way doesn't give me that definite alignment to make it this way. All right, now, one other thing. We talk about the energy First, in order for you to move, the energy is implanted in your extremities on the bottom, your foot, your leg. The energy then starts to gravitate up to your uh, hip area, to your back, then extends to your, your uh, arms and your, your uh, hands. So similarly, out, shift your hands, the energy comes up and here I am again. Now, it's going to be kind of tricky, but when you extend, it's not just the movement from here to here. It's coming from the muscle in your core, that means this back area, all the time. So to make a point clear, commencing form is not just using your hand. This is when I'm just using but commencing form is actually using my back muscle to bring it up. 
my back muscle to push down that energy. Push down, push down. Whereas it's rudimentary and elementary to just get up, which is a very different, very different. So right from the beginning, you should be using those muscles in the back. Slowly bring up the arms, take a deep breath in, shoulder level, push down, using that muscle. Wrap the left hand around, you're gonna T-step and hold your ball. Parting of the horse's knee. Out with your heel away from the back foot, shift that hand first, then rotate, stretch. Sit back, out, hold your ball in the line, heel, the knee, rotate, part. Sit back, out, 45, align, heel, open the knee, rotate, shift and stretch. Half step forward, hold your ball. Rotate by spinning that ball. Lifting up your hand, lifting up your foot. Putting your toe down. White crane spreads its wings on its toes. Half step forward. Rotate at the same time. Putting your weight on your back. Lifting up your hand first into that stable. Lifting up your foot. Right crane you spread the swings like this. Alright. How is that different? My left hand first should be caught in a relaxed position. My weight should be always on the back. The toe has no weight at all. It's just there. It's just there. So you can come in and fiddle with my, my left foot. The right hand, remember now, cannot flare off this way. It has to cut the corner of my shoulder. Baby finger has to cut the corner of my shoulder. And it has to be slightly above my forehead. Okay? Okay, can you try that? So give me the last part of the horse's name. Check out that back knee. Half step forward, hold your ball. Roll, take your ball at the same time. Lift your back. Lift up your hand. And then your foot. Then set on your toe. Right. Grasping of the bird's tail. Out with your heel. Open your knees. Shift your hand. Ward off. Come on. Flip and knee. Roll down. Roll back. Look back. Turn first, square first. Get that momentum square off and then push. Separate. Sit back. Push. Up and forward. Not go beyond your knees. Drop your left hand. Turn your left foot. T-step. Hold your ball. Out with your heel. Shift your hand. Open the knee. Ward off. Flip and meet. Pull down, pull back, look back, turn, square, then contact, push. Separate, sit back, push, up and forward. Drop your right hand, turn your right foot, cup, don't forget to T-step, cup, look at the back hand, hook it, out away from your foot, Single width. 